Hi, my name's Stevie and I like to write songs. This is part three of making a song in the Phrygian dominant mode. Although we started making the song in the Phrygian dominant mode, we've digressed a wee bit away from that now, and we're probably gonna do that even further. I think the important thing is that we use the Phrygian dominant mode as a catalyst to get the song started, and getting the song started is a big step. And let's just explore what other music we can add to the song today to give it some more spice and interest. If you want to see the series from the start, the link will be in the description. Let's go. So far what we have in the song are two separate sections of verse, pre-chorus and chorus, and in the second section it's just verse and chorus. We've got gaps, so we need to fill in all these gaps now, write an intro, segue chorus one into verse two, maybe come up with some kind of outro as well. I'll leave the guitar solo for the last episode because I've got something in mind. You can see in the thumbnails that I've mentioned chromatic mediants, and that is the chord structure ideas that I'm looking to explore in the guitar solo. But in the meantime, let's fill in these gaps. Let's have a listen to what we have so far. It's getting harder every Right, it sounds great. I'm so happy with it. The second section is basically the same thing, except with different lyrics. So where do we go from here? Let's try something. Right, so I've moved everything forward to give myself a nice big gap here. And I want to take the monosynth part that we started working on at the very start of the song and move it down here so that we've something to listen to and work from. I think we could use that as the starting point again to write the intro of the song. <laughs> And we had the idea as well that maybe we wanted to have it in F minor to help with the segue. So that's what I think I should do. I should make sure that the intro is in F minor so that when we come out and that it suggests some kind of an easy route towards the C Phrygian dominant. So that when we come out of chorus number one, then we can come back to this intro and it'll ease over the transition between how we finish the chorus in F minor and how we start the new verse in C Phrygian Dominant. So let's see what this sounds like in F minor first. Well, actually F Phrygian Dominant. Actually, it gives me an idea straight away. I wonder would that be a good bass riff on the bass guitar? Let's record it and see what it sounds like. <laughs> Let's check it. Actually, I think I like it better without the... Let's take out that a minute. I like it. I think that's cool. Now, what if I tried to add some kind of chords to that, maybe? Let's put this on a loop.
liking the atmosphere of that. That's cool. I really like that. Let's just try and give ourselves more bass to work with and let's see if we can record something. Just as I was playing that, I sort of thought, oh, why don't we do this piano part as the first thing we hear? Nice. Right, so that would come in at the wrong time then. If we say we want two roughs. on there. So I actually only needed one because I think I think the next thing will come straight after that. We'll move on to something else. We use this as the very start. Maybe clean guitars. We already have clean guitars here. I wonder what they sound like. Added the electric piano. I kept the original piano that we're using later on because that sounds great for it. But I decided I wanted something a wee bit more ambient for this. So, so I've changed to that sound. If you're curious about that, I think that's just another Arturia preset, Autumn Spirit, and it's from their Atmosphere Sound Bank. Let's have a listen to that intro and see how it makes us feel. somewhere. So we should all bang in at that point. Okay, let's add that. Just adding a kind of sparkle in the background of the guitars. I feel like maybe we should have some kind of pad sound too, just to fill out some of the implied chords that are not being played on the guitars. Right, so we quick search find Neptune strings on Colossus. Right, 
We seem to have morphed into F minor now by the sound of it, rather than the Phrygian dominant that we were doing in the previous section. I kind of want to listen to it from the start again because I have a feeling that maybe we could try and get this key change in now, the key change that we need for getting into the verses, because we've strongly done the F thing and maybe we should try and get into C somehow. I was thinking maybe maybe we could just come in now in C with a heavier rough that plays the same type of thing. It'll feel like a completely natural thing if we're sort of playing the same rough in a new key. I'll try that and see what it sounds like. You never know. Right, so I tried to come up with a couple of roughs that brought the stuff back into C again. I end up I couldn't decide between two different versions. So one of them is a more simplified one. Which is far closer to what we're already doing in the intro. But then um, I also accidentally stumbled across this riff and I think it works really well as well. <laughs> And I thought, why not do both? So we'll start off with this one. And then more. So that gives us even more of a build up. Right, so what I'm hoping for is if we take this MIDI here for the mono synth and we move it up to C, then hopefully that'll work over the new riffs. It does. And I think we should probably carry on with the lead guitars as well. I do the same thing up in C. So I think maybe the best thing to do then, it's almost as if we have established this F stuff and we have established that we can move away to C and now we can go back to F and then when we move to C for the verse it'll feel like we're moving back and forward, I think anyway. So what I want to do is go right back to the start with this and maybe copy this up and see what it sounds like. If we come back into that bass ostinato just before the vocals come in. Sort of brings the intro full circle, right? So what is the sound like coming out of that? The drums would need to carry on. Right, I need to write a drum line for that. Right, so we've got our drum line now, let's see. So 
So the moment of truth would be to connect these two sections together and see what, see if we've got the full intro. Let's see. Could well have it. Although I felt maybe the guitar should carry on. So it doesn't feel right that the lead guitar stop. So let's do something for the lead guitars just to carry them on into the vocals appearing. I think we're ready to listen to the full effect of the intro and see if it brings us into the song nicely. Now, I kind of wonder now if this segue could be something simple, like maybe just this section. Right, so it was just simply a case of copying this wee section from just before the vocals came in up to here. Um, I made a couple of wee edits on the drums, and hopefully if we pull all this stuff back now. Right, so let's check this section. Nice. So it's all working out for me. Cool. Right, so a couple of things that we would do now is probably take this up to here again. Maybe it's just a placeholder. I'm not sure. But we probably use that at the end of the chorus to lead into the guitar solo. <laughs> Okay, and then the guitar solo kicks in. And then we'll take the whole chorus and we'll move it up to somewhere in the distance after the guitar solo. For now, we'll just move it up to here. So then we'll have the final chorus of the song and we need an outro. Back probably. I think maybe, maybe that would... Something more like that. Right, let's see what I can write for that.
Right, the first thing I was thinking about when I played that big long chord at the ending was that maybe we should use the main ostinato that we started the whole song on, this bit, and pull it up here and let that be repeating at the end, completing the full circle. Let's make sure it's an F. Let's make sure it's the right thing. Yeah, let's... Okay, let's hear what that sounds like at the very end here. Yep. And so just let the whole chord fade out like that. I do the fade in post whenever we're finished mixing. We'll give ourselves plenty with that. We had chords in that section at the very start on pad sound, wasn't it? I think it's that. Yep, let's do that. I think we could try and give that chord a wee bit more definition as well and maybe have the electric piano playing it as well. Let's see. Okay, cool. I think we've done everything that I was planning to do for today. So it'll be all about guitar solo next week and our, what do we call them again? Our chromatic mediants. So I'll tell you all about what these chords are in the next episode and then we'll get down to writing the guitar solo. So let's hear everything, a whole playthrough. So this will be the whole song minus the guitar solo. Very moody. It's dark. I like it. I like it.
And then the guitar solo, which I'm hoping will just be a little composition of its own. And it'll be followed by this. Cool. Really, really happy with it. It's coming together really, really well. It just shows you. You write a song and you never know where it's going to go. And sometimes they're disappointing. Sometimes they're awesome. That's the beauty of songwriting. Right, guys, I hope you're enjoying the journey so far. Because I certainly am. I'm really on a roll with this song and I'm really enjoying it. I'm definitely in the zone with it and I can't wait to finish it. It's really, I'm really proud of it. It's really cool. Next week, it'll be all guitar solo. It'll be Shred Central here next week. Thank you so much, guys, for following me on this journey. And I hope you're finding it useful and interesting and inspiring for your own songwriting. Thank you so much, guys. And, oh, while we're here, there's some news on the channel. First of all, I'm seeing a lot more interaction from people, which is very, very encouraging. Look at all these comments. And they're all about this particular song. So thank you so much, guys. You don't know how much it means to me that people are actually starting to take notice of this. In my wildest dreams, I never thought that I'd be getting these kinds of comments, so awesome. Also, this week I got 666 subscribers, and I promised a few people that if I got 666 subscribers, <laughs> that if I got 666 subs, that I would do an Iron Maiden song. So when we finish this song, the next thing we're going to do will be the Iron Maiden song. Looking forward to that as well. One of my favorite all-time bands. Kick ass. Okay, guys, thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, please do all the things that help the channel to grow and support the channel any way you can. Interact, like, subscribe, buy me a coffee. But you know what won't be coffee I'll be buying? I'll be buying myself some Guinness because I am Irish and that's what we do with all our money. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. See you next week. You guys raw.